Hi guys, in this week's video I thought I might go through another Reaper tutorial. I have been mixing an album so far this week and I nearly finished it. But I thought another interesting video would be just to show you guys how to set up sends and returns in Reaper. Here's the track that I've been working on. I'm not going to actually play it, but... Right, down here you can see I have these two tracks set up. These are my effects, auxiliary channels really. Some other uh, DAWs have um, like more specific, what would you say, methods of doing this where you create an actual auxiliary track. Um, as far as I remember Pro Tools uses them for sure where you set up a new track and when you select the type of track you set it to auxiliary input. Reaper however you just set up a track, a regular old track like any other so we'll just pretend I didn't set up this reverb now and we'll just set up a reverb auxiliary track. So. You go to track, insert new track, or control and T if you want to use the shortcut. And that creates a new empty track in Reaper for you. And then I would normally name it after the effect that I'm going to be using. So, um, reverb 2 we'll call it. Then you want to set up an effect, um, whatever one you want to use. Uh, I'll just use the Reaper Zone reverb. Um, just whatever they have is fine. Then I would normally set the wet to full volume or 0 dB. Take the dry down to infinity. And then that's that done. Then if you want to add reverb to a track, you then let's see, we'll go into this guitar track here and then you click into the sends receives and hardware output options which is here it's also down here if you go to routing in the mixer window and it brings up this dialog box then you go to send and you scroll down through your track list until you find the auxiliary track that you set up click into it and it gives you this fader which allows you to send more or less of that track to the effect which then gives the effect <laughs> of adding an effect it um, basically adds reverb to that track and it's handy to do it this way you could just go into the effects box of each and every track you have and add a reverb there and set the settings there and then but this way you have one effect set up you have it set to the way you like uh, all the channels can then use the same reverb the same style of reverb which helps glue the track together the song together um, they all sound like they're in the same space but relatively distant or close based on the amount of reverb you add and then if you want to adjust the amount of reverb on each and every track you can click into the auxiliary track you set up, the reverb 2 track and then it will give you actually its own little mixer here which would be more obvious if I had a few extra ones, I'll just send a few more to it Where's it gone? Right, so now you can see that in the reverb channel, in the routing section, you actually have a little mixer that allows you to control exactly how much reverb is on each track. It's not just for reverb though, as you can see I also have one for delay. Um, it would most commonly be used for delays and reverbs, but there's no reason why you couldn't use it for anything really, any kind of effects that you want to use on more than one track. Um, one of the biggest benefits of this over adding individual effects 
instances to each track is um, it's much less uh, resource intensive. So if you have a slower or older PC or laptop, then this will allow you to add more effects to more channels without the thing crashing. Um, it's not really so much of a problem for me. I have a pretty decent, powerful computer here, but then it's, it's also just an uh, organizational tool. Um, it makes it much easier to see where all of your effects is. It's easier to control. You can click in here and mix it very quickly and easily. So yeah. So anyway, short video this week. Thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. And next week I think I'm going to be doing some more pedal building stuff. I've set up a little area that I want to show off. A little workspace. So that will probably be the next video, and then we'll get into building pedals properly. I'll try and do some more of these little tutorials as well though, because I enjoy do them, doing them and I think they're useful. So, thanks!